never have a birthday, birthday party celebra- at Mazio. Stop <laughs> it. <laughs> never. It was it was thoughtful. It was not even clean. And we went out thoughtful. to eat. <laughs> My mom, okay, that's all I'm say my mom, thoughtful. and my aunt, they came to Mazia's, and my mom the took, whole story. Nobody knew where you were. I went to school to pick you up, and you and and I get to the school, and the teacher's like, "She's not here," and I'm like, "Well, where is she?" So my mom and my aunt, my aunt had a gun. My trifling, her trifling aunt. My mom, my aunt had a gun, and they show up at Mazio's Pizza. Took my Without food. the gun. They left the gun in the car. Took the pizza and dumped it in Mary's head. Um, uh, we dumped so it on you Wait see the kind we of dumped things it on that I had to witness. They Not Mary. It. We dumped it on and Mary. And then grabbed my hand and we walked out. And I remember just thinking like. She had like, been missing for four, five hours. Love is a treasure chest. But once opened, our hearts become vulnerable. I, I went back to Vegas. It was the sky. He appeared as a friend. Sure enough, it led to infidelity. Alignment can't be ignored. We talked about certain topics while I was having kids. She didn't want to have kids. Um, and that was one of the red flags. And I know you desire marriage. So I think it's best you move on with your life. What you do, hold on, Lisa, what you do? I told him, okay. <laughs> she didn't ask me why. <laughs> I knew several other women's bodies better than I knew my own. I've, I watched their videos of them having sex, so I would try to imitate that. No discussion is off limits. Dear Future Wifey Podcast brings healing. You inspire us to try God a little bit more. Up and through this platform, I have realized that it's possible. It's possible to love again. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. Season 7 is all about tough topics. I'm Latarius R. Winfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Latarius R. Winfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, season seven, tough topics. I'm so elated that we are deep diving into these topics, topics that have been a little taboo, not only in our communities, but also in the church. And so I love that God has created this platform where we can heal together. Well, today's episode, I've been getting a lot of DMs from a lot of women that said, I want you to have an episode to talk about healing mother and daughter relationships. And I said, that's interesting because I never even thought about before you decide to get married or how your mother and daughter relationships, even son and father relationships can impact how you see love and how you see yourself as a parent when that time comes. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, my homie, Jessica Chinyulu and Michelle Priest. What's going on? Hello, thank you for having us, brother. Jessica, Jessica you in here now? Yes, I know. I done finally made it to the yellow couch, and it's the new yellow couch. So it's yes. season seven. There it is. So at first, I was going to have you come on a couple of seasons ago when I saw how much you um, esteemed uh, your husband. You you had this post where you talked about um, how you kind of went against the grain and what you've been. Uh, not so much taught in the church, but how people try to match make you with certain type of personalities and you realize that your husband giving him an opportunity to love you was the best decision you ever made. So what you're trying to say is how I basically said I wouldn't go marry no bastard. <laughs> Pretty much. And Pretty I much. was uh, very much okay. I met my husband at the club. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> And we are still married happily. We, when you say married pastor, was somebody trying to make you marry a pastor? You know, I feel like back in that day when everybody was making them pinky promises and yeah. stuff. Yeah. And everybody was like, I just have to marry a man on a pool who's at the pulpit and he's gonna we're gonna do ministry together. That's wonderful, but that just wasn't for me, realistically. <laughs> like, Did you try it out though? Were you I going tried down it out and I thank God that I have parents that were honest with me because <laughs> my daddy was like, He's not gonna change, you know? <gasps> He's at church Sunday, Monday, <laughs> Tuesday, Wednesday. Is that you? And I was like, no, nah, that's not me. And my mama, she said, if you marry... Oh, I was about to say his name. I'm not going to say his name. <laughs> she said... I was it- about to say his nickname that I gave him. Because I called him... His, it's, I called him praying something. Yes, don't say it. <laughs> <laughs> she was like, girl, if you marry him, you're going to cheat on him. <laughs> so we thank God 
Who for parents. God? We for thank parents. God that I did not marry him. Mm -hmm. You thank God for parents who have lived. Yeah. Hey, amen. Amen. And knew you was for the streets. <laughs> and you had to find a husband who was also for the streets. <laughs> So, Look, Jessica, where are you from? I am originally from Greenville, Texas. That's where I was born and raised. But y'all see my black mama over here. Cherokee and, um, cheeks. Yes. <laughs> and uh, my dad is Nigerian. So I am truly African-American. Yeah. Yes. Truly. Shout out to Nigeria. We always rank uh, top one or two. As a podcast, wow! Nigeria. Nigeria yeah. stand up. Mm -hmm. All the Nigerian sisters looking for husbands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they said that what's so awesome about the platform it gives um, a healthy perspective on relationships, and so they wished a lot of their Nigerian men would watch it because we teach men how to be emotional, how not to be so you know. Because as as black men, we're we're programmed to not be emotional, not to share our heart, not to say even I love you or if something hurts to to shed a tear or be Facts. open and vulnerable. And so it's been reshaping the way we do love. And I thank God for that. Michelle. Yes. How many years have you been married? 17. 17 years. Um, is this your first marriage? This is my third marriage. Third marriage. We're going to deep dive into that. We're going to deep dive into, um, you've been married how many years? It'll be seven in December. Seven in December. Um, we're going to back up. How old was Jessica when you gave birth to her? How old was Jessica when I, I mean, not Jessica. I mean, how old were you when you gave birth to Jessica? That was a trick question. So you, were you, were paying, you were seeing if I was actually listening. He was like, Mama looks asleep over there. Let me just. How old was Jessica when she, was, when she came out the womb? Now, she was really... don't get me to laughing because it's like, it's hard to get us to stop when we. <laughs> we be cracking up. I'm sorry, but yes. How old we might have you? to take five for this. How old were you? Okay, so I was 16 when I met Jessica's dad. Okay. He was the manager at Grandy's Chicken. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But also, how old was dad? And I was a hostess. How old was how, dad? How old was dad? Dad was 35. And you were 17. Yeah. So, no, you were 16. I was 16 when I met. Yeah, 16 when I started working. I know. Right. So we're going somewhere with this. Let's talk. Um, again, because this goes to me not knowing their culture. Okay. Yeah. But also self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So uh, met him 16, married him at 18, had Jessica 18 and a half going into 19. Yeah. So your parents allowed you to date somebody when you were 16 years old that was 30-something? Well, can we That's talk about the color trauma purple? In itself. This is what we're talking about. Um, and I think we said this earlier, teaching, uh, passing on uh, trauma versus tradition. Yes. So these are things that were passed down because my mom was married at 12. What? Exactly. Hold on. There's so much to unpack here. So, yeah. mm. so that's that's why it's so important. How your mama get married at 12 in the United States? But you think back then that was okay. That was okay. So when we when I watch the color purple, I think, oh, this is what it must have been like for my mom. And also talk about how how many kids Big Mama had and all the different baby daddies too. Oh yeah. Yeah, and. I used to look at it as shame because my mom had six children by six different daddies. But I understand by her having her first child at 12 and her mother, my mom's stepmother was 14, which was why she was married off at 12. When her mom died uh, and my mom was raising her brothers and her sisters and then her stepmother, my mom's 12, her stepmother is 14. What in the world? Mm -hmm. What in the color purple? You ain't lying. So, yeah. Um, but again, it took me years to understand what must life have been like for yeah. my mom. She was a child who went on to raise her grandchildren up until she passed away. So she was never not raising kids, children. From 12 years old. Mm hmm. Probably younger because I have a picture of my grand of my 
grandparents in a sl- in a um in a cotton in a cotton field. field. Yeah. So somebody had to watch the babies while. So my mom was. I I can only imagine how young she started raising children. How old did she live to? My mom lived to sixty two. And so, but it wasn't a happy life. Explain. I um from the relationships that she was in, um, like my first remembrance of my mom's relationship was her getting beat and ambulances, um, picking her up and police cars and, uh, yeah. So that's the, that's your first memory. I, I was four or five at the time. So you've always watched your mom as you was growing up being in abusive relationships. Yeah. One way or the other. Yeah, whether it was physical or a mental, watching, you know, somebody cheat. Yeah. And so when you gave birth, well, when you got married at 16, well, 18-ish, that was no big deal or whatever. Your, your mom was like, your mom met your husband and your boyfriend or whatever. Oh, my mom, like, my mom loved him. So that was, okay, I dated a pastor church musician and I was 14 and he was in his thirties and that was what? okay. Yeah. It was okay. He's world? so shocked. I, yeah, I, couldn't, oh I couldn't go on dates. Let me say this. I could not go on dates, but I could go to church and date with church. this man. Well, he could, was allowed to pick me up as long as it was going to a church, church function. Yeah. And did, was y'all just going to church? Y'all sitting what in do church you think? Parking? Exactly. What mm-hmm. do you think? Yeah. But, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's what was normalized to you at 14. Mm-hmm. Is dating older guys and they're straight up pedophiles. Because that's exactly that's what it exactly, is. That's exactly mm. what it was. But again, you have to remember, my mom came, was born in... 1929 where that was normalized and back where that was normalized um and it wasn't that i realized it was wrong until one of my mom's friends he gave me a pair of underwear for a present for something i don't remember what it was and he lived down the street from my friend my mom's friend and my friends my mom's friend called her and said he gave her a pair of underwear you know, like, and so she was like, you know, that's not right. Mm-hmm. You, you know, yeah. <laughs> Boy, I see it's a lot. It's a lot to unpack in this. So, and that's why I understand why y'all will get there about what y'all's relationship was. Um, and so here it is. So 18 years old, you give birth to Jessica. Was that a planned pregnancy? It wasn't a planned pregnancy. But I'm I'm glad she's here now. But of course, I'm 18 years old. Was it a no? Um, I wanted to finish high school, but um, and she had, had whole aspirations track scholarship yeah, track she scholarship. and do other things. But I came from a family where, oh Savannah, this a good man. He's yeah. a good man, Savannah. Yeah. You go on and marry him. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and but I knew that I didn't want to do it. You knew it. Oh yeah, I knew it. Um, you know, during my wedding, I my older sister, I kept asking for somebody to send her back because I was gonna tell her, Hey, I don't wanna do this, you know. I ain't never heard that. This is my first time hearing this. Well, I didn't want to get married. I'm gonna say that. Wow. (laughs) I mean, I've seen their I've seen their wedding pictures. In my mom we got married in my mom's kitchen. In my in my grandma's kitchen. Yeah, the, the, at a house in Neilanville, Texas. Was it the pastor, the pastor at the church that married y'all? Yeah. And so I got married in the kitchen. You didn't really want to go through with it. You're about 18. He's in his mid to late 30s. Mm-hmm. And um, you went along with it. Shortly after, you give birth to Jessica. What are you thinking at that age? No, <laughs> let's go back because Jessica just said that you were a track star. Is that true? Yeah. And I, so you had a track scholarship. Mm-hmm. What was your plans at 18? Mm-hmm. Um, well, my mom I can had, sing too. I had left home. My my mother had beat me. She was very abusive, and she had beat me really, really bad. And it was kind of a well, it was a public beating to where people in the community 
were like, oh, my God. You know, she did it in front of everybody. With what? What did she beat you with? Um, I think it was a broomstick. Yeah, it was a broomstick. And she actually broke the broomstick across my back. Across and your she was, back. Yeah. And so the people in the community, which the population at that time was 168. We're a very small community. And... Do you when, know how hard you got to hit somebody to break a stick on a broomstick on their back? Do you know I say now, if I get into a fight with anybody, they really going to have to hurt me, hurt me beca- because of that. Yeah, you've experienced. Like, yeah. And so the the neighbors saw it, the community saw it, and then what happened? Um, My sister, who is old enough to be my mom, mind you, my mom had her first child at 12. So my sister, who is old enough to be my mom, they called my sister and said, hey, Miss Vera, just you know, be Michelle, you need to check on her. And my sister called and she says, Hey, I know mom is right there. And she says, but when you go to school in the morning, she said, don't get on the bus, walk to Miss so-and-so's house and I'm going to pick you up there. And my sister picked me up the next morning and I, I didn't have any clothes or anything. And my, um, stepdad my mom packed all my stuff set it outside and it rained the next day and my stepdad a couple of days later he brought the bags of clothes he was like you know your mom set your stuff outside here's your your clothes and yeah um yeah was it um hmm did you experience any type of uh molestation growing up yeah was it anything? Did your stepdad do anything? No, no. I my stepdad. I have to say, he's responsible um, in great portion for the person that I am today, because he taught me. My my stepdad taught me to be ladylike and elegant. He had daughters. Okay. And he was widowed, um, and so the interaction that he had with his daughters. It taught me how to be ladylike. And he was a deacon in the church and very, very graceful, very charming, very soft spoken. And yeah, I learned a lot of etiquette, grace and um, qualities of how I wanted a man to treat me from my stepdad. So you've had a great example of what as a man much as is. my mom would allow him to be. Explain. Because she, on the other hand, was, you know, raging. I would say my mom now, um, watching her and the mood swings was bipolar. Okay. And she would just do things, um, have moments that weren't so graceful. And so your stepdad took your stuff. You uh, At that point, what you say, I'm never going to return to that home again? Yeah, but it wasn't a, an ideal situation to live with my sister either because my niece, who's actually older than me, again, my mom and my, uh, well, I didn't say the part, but my mom and my sister were pregnant at the same time. So my niece God, is color pr- the color <laughs> purple of it all. You say your mom and your sister was pregnant at the same time. My mom and my two sisters were pregnant at the same time. Oh, my God, two, so one, I have, I told you it's a lot to Nieces unpack. and nephews. Oh, it's a lot. That are the I'm same to get age. To when Jessica was born, and here we, 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 we You got <laughs> layers upon layers upon layers here. So yeah. <clears throat> okay, so it wasn't the ideal situation living with your sister. Um, eventually, you meet this guy. Y'all get married. <laughs> y'all give birth to Jessica. It was unplanned. You were a track star. Had a college scholarship. Did you take that that uh, college scholarship? Well, I got pregnant with Jessica. So I couldn't, and that's a good man, Savannah. Right. The mama and the sister in the ear, you know, you should go ahead and marry this man. You know, he got a good job. That's a good man, Savannah. Yeah. (laughs) The good job what working at Grandy's? At Grandy's. (laughs) Grandy's Chicken. (laughs) But, mind you, I'm from Neyland. I like that chicken fried chicken at Grandy's. Don't you know? Does Grandy's even exist Mm -hmm. anymore? They do. Okay. That's sweet tea. There's one in Pleasant Grove. One in Garland. (laughs) Might be one still in Old Cliff right there. There's yeah. one in Garland, yeah. yeah. And so you get married, good job, give birth to Jessica. When she, when she was born, mm-hmm. I know you said you're happy now, 
But was there any type of animosity? Did, did this baby just ruined my track scholarship? Just ruined my life? Did you ever have those moments? No, not not when she was was uh, born. Um, I think I was living the country mom life. Um, the baby, you the know, husband. the husband. And which is what I was basically taught to do. Right. And very heavily involved in church. So church, mom, and husband, being a wife, at that time, that was all I could foresee because that is all that was around me. Right. So you assimilate into this world that programmed you to be this mother, honor your husband, love the Lord, be in church. You got this uh, amazing baby, and I'm, this is the my lot in life. Did you have any goals or aspirations at that point, or just be a wife and a mother? Well, I was heavily involved in church at that time, so I was praise and worship leader, um, and that was more, I was completely dedicated to serving God using my voice for for the church only, um, traveling and singing. Um, I even sang background for, I don't know if you know, Carolyn Trailer. Yeah, yeah. So I, I did background for Carolyn yeah. Trailer. was traveling with her and Pastor Fred, Fred yeah. Thomas that passed away. So those are my hometown. Yeah, so those Fred are like, Thomas, that's my buddy. Yeah, that's those were aunts and uncles. Fred lived at our house. So my yeah. sense of humor, which you probably will hear, a lot of my humor. Comes from him. I mean, he was at our house every day, so that's, how could that, you not? That, 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 was, that was my buddy. He did a play with me at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship. I mm. had him um, be in this play, and like that's 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 my dude. So when he passed away, that was in 2020, wasn't it? Yeah. 2020? Uh, 2019, 2020. It just, 2020, yeah. It just, it, I was just like, Lord Jesus. Um, so um, you got this child doing church, traveling around, living the nice uh, Christian honoring the Lord, using your gifts for his glory. Mm -hmm. At what point did, I'm going to ask Jessica, because maybe it may have hit her earlier. At what point did you feel that your relationship with your mom wasn't as becoming as you would like? How old were you and what happened at that moment? When was Natalie born? Uh, 91. 91. And how, that means I was probably like four. four. Yeah, four or five I think that's when I kind of noticed the big shift. And what was the shift at four years old? You were just jealous of your, your, your baby sister? It wasn't a jealousy thing. I think there was a lot going on because I noticed the turmoil between my parents. Okay. So I noticed that they weren't happy. Noticed she said that she didn't even want to go into that marriage. So right. as a child, I think when you're really young, you can see when parents don't really have a loving relationship. Absolutely. My dad, he worked all the time. So I didn't really ever feel like there was, oh, my God, we just love each other so much. So I never got that from my my parents. But then when my sister came into the picture, I felt like that was just oh, because she was born sick. And with her being born sick, now did I have to deal with my dad hardly ever being at home because he was always at work. Now my mom is being taken away from me because she's constantly always at the hospital. So that left me to always have to be with my cousins. So I was okay. always with my grandmother who we call big mama. And I was always with the other grandkids that she was taking care of. So I personally really don't have a ton of memories of me as a little girl, like with my mom, I feel like I have more memories of us. Like whenever I was, when we lived at Pepperport, that those are some of my best memories. What age was that? I think what was eight, eight, like seven, eight. And that's because like we were together with me, you, my sister at that point in time, my parents, they had already gotten divorced. So how did you take that? Were you happy I, about I it? I was not happy about okay. it because I was also still like, man, maybe they can work it out. You're around people where, you know, you go to school and you see friends yeah. where their parents are together. So I always had this idea in my mind that my parents one day are going to work it out and get back together. But they never did. Yeah. Now that I'm older, I realize that was the best thing that could have ever happened. Right. But then I really wanted them to stick it out. I did. 
And so, um, eight years old, dealing with the demise of your parents' marriage, where now did you feel like, and your sister was still dealing with her sickness, did y'all recalibrate y'all relationship? You said those were the happier moments with you and your mom. I think they were the happier moments because at that time I was living with my mom, but there was a period of time and this was with her when you met Sam. Oh, oh sh- <laughs> Peter. Sam. <laughs> Praying, Lord, we don't have to block out <laughs> names, but okay. Her second husband. Um, I remember when they met, and I just remember being like, I didn't like him. I did not like him, and I had a feeling that up oh, this man is going to take my mom away. And sure enough, that did happen. And so I remember what do you mean by take her away. So, because at that age, what made you say? You felt like he was going to take her away and you would go back and live with, your, with, with Big Mama? Well, I was going to live, live with my dad. I never actually lived with my grandmother. I lived with my dad. Um, okay. I would spend a lot of time with my grandmother because my dad works so much. Um, and that's like the place that I would go if he needed somebody to watch me. But when I say take... Do you say that you lived with your dad by choice? No. We gave you the option. You don't remember that? Your dad and I gave you the option and you said you wanted to live with dad. I don't remember that okay. whenever you left to go to El Paso, which oh, okay. was the next part that I was about to get oh, to. Oh, okay. Go ahead, girl. Yes. So when my mom met her second husband, um, when he came into the picture, she moved to El Paso. I had family that lived in El Paso. And I don't know if he just all of a sudden came, but I remember being in the second grade and one of my teachers, she was like, oh my God, congratulations. And I was like, for what? And she was like, I heard your mom got married. And in my mind, I was just kind of thinking like, all right. And at this point, I'm living with my dad now. And I'm just like, wait a minute. Hold up. My mom done got married. I don't even know about it. And I'm hearing about it from my second grade teacher. So when I say like he was taking her away, yeah. I felt like it was one of those things like in that moment when they met each other, it was something that she really liked. And it was like, you know what? I'm going to go after this. And during that period, me and my sister we lived with my dad. And so I feel like during those years, there had there had already been so much. So yeah. now here I am between the ages of four, four, five, six, seven, and eight. I've had to deal with my parents going through a divorce. I've had to also deal with my mom now being with someone else and seeing that. And then I also have to deal with having a sick sister. So in a way, I always tell people, like, I'm very much always alone and doing my own thing because sometimes I feel like I had to be independent. Yeah. I didn't have a choice. It was just the situation that I was brought into. And I didn't enjoy that as a child. I did not enjoy it. So, Michelle, what um, what made it? Why didn't Jessica know that you were going to marry him? During that time, and I, I have to be honest, I really don't remember. Yeah. Um, when her sister was born sick, it was. Oh, let me ask you this: Did the sister go with you to El Paso? No. no. Oh. And the plan for El Paso was not to stay in El Paso. El Paso was just a two month period. So it wasn't like it was a year. It was my family thought it would be best for me to take a little break because I had been taking care of a sick child. And they were like, we have family there. You know, she can stay with her dad and we're all here. So you go to El Paso and, you know, stay with family for two months. So both of the kids, the dad took care of both of them. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, okay. So let me say it like this. But I feel like it was longer than, it was longer than two months. <laughs> no, it was two months. It was, it was a summer. The, uh, but the, I was at school. It, I was at school when Miss, uh, I don't think she remembers that she chose for the, for the period. Time, the duration for, for it to be longer. She chose to stay. No, no, no. That she chose I don't know if she, I don't think she remembers it, that she chose to stay with her dad. When, At what point? Before y'all got married or, so you when, said before you went to El Paso, when, did you say, do you want to come with us? Or do you want to stay with your dad? So when I came back from El Paso, so the plan was for them to stay with their dad for the, for the two months. For the summer. Right. And so when 
the person came and asked me to marry them while I was in El Paso. But I, I do, and I, on, I, I do want to also rewind too, because, you know, I, okay. So mom, there was also, cause I, I, I want to also get to the place of like, why anyone would understand like why I really didn't want to live with you. No, we I understand now, but that's what I'm, I'm trying yeah. to explain to him why, because there were so many different transitions. Like, as soon as my parents got a divorce, even before the second husband, there was also another person that she dated. Okay. Very nice person. But for me, it was just like, okay, there's dad, there's this person. Now we've got another person. Right. So there was a lot of that. And for me, I didn't want to be a part of that. I see. That makes sense. Yeah. Because you still having hope that mom and dad will get back together. I'm still stuck there. Yep. I'm yep. still stuck there, even though I'm way past that now. I was very much still <laughs> stuck there. I hope you passed by now. You still as there. A, I'm like... as, as a little girl, you know, Taft. So yeah. as a little girl, I was processing so much. You didn't want to move with her. Why? So there were a lot of different transitions. And one of them being, you know, my parents had just gotten a divorce. And right after the divorce, there was someone else that she dated. Then after dating that person, then there was the husband number two, and then also having to deal with a sick sister. And and at that time, of course, you still haven't hoped that mom and dad will get back together. Yes, I'm still very much hoping that one day my parents are going to get back together. In fact, I remember as a little girl praying to God, like, God, please, like, let my mom and dad get back together. So anytime you saw your mom with another guy, that was like competition for your dad. It, yes, it yeah. was. And then I will. Also, and she let them know that, too. Oh, you did? <laughs> oh, I was not. Look, part of the reason like I know, like, God forbid, if things did not work out with me and my husband, I would not marry a man that had children. I couldn't because I was a terrible stepdaughter. Yeah, I was when I was younger. So I like for her to confess that because she a lot of it. Let her let her say it. Oh, I gave them hell. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, Jessica? So you're you're hearing this, I'm, and I'm gonna come back. I'm with gonna it, admit though. it. You know, what I, would you do? There were just things, you know. Like I, I, I will share one about my my stepmom because I gave her a very hard time. Um, I used to go to my dad's house, and I would just sit in my room and lock my door, and she would try to talk to me, and I just would not talk to her. I was like, no, because I was like, if I don't want either one of my parents to be happy with other people. Like if they're not going to get back together, then they just not going to be happy. The mild version. What would they do? Michelle? Well, so I want to back up a little bit. Okay. We're going to go back to this, uh, moving to San Antonio. I mean, moving to uh, El, El Paso, Paso. To, to divorcing Jessica's dad. Okay. Mind you, the age gap. Right. I was 16 when we met. He's 35. Right. So the reason for the divorce from her dad was because I found a letter that said to his uncle that he had done what he needed to do to become a U.S. citizen. Oh, okay. Oh, Jesus. So she, she forgets that part. <laughs> she said, oh, Lord. She said, hey. Speaking of arranged marriages. So mm -hmm. mind you, so when I'm... 19 when I read this letter. All our business just coming out today. <laughs> right, because <laughs> I need to put things in context of why a lot of things going on. Yeah. I'm I'm 18, 19 now, and you find a letter that I did what I needed to do to become a U.S. citizen. What are your thoughts? Oh, it's heartbroken. You, you feel like it was just all a, so a just lie. So, you, so we won't think it's a whole bunch of Mama, a uh, 304 for the streets, <laughs> and she just jumping around. You know, I didn't. Mama say was a rolling stone. I did not say that. That yeah. did not so, come out so of my mouth at all. Anything that I did, <laughs> even at that time, I still honor the fact that I'm country bumpkin. Again, my population 168. Hey, Neelanville, Texas, now population 97. <laughs> <laughs> so, they didn't grow, they decreased. <laughs> so for me, by this time, you know, I'm 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 heartbroken and I have a sick baby. Yeah. That needs her life depends on you taking care of her and doing certain processes of which her father couldn't deal with. So was your was your sister, was she what was she considered? Was she was it like 
not saying a vegetable state, but where she has to be hooked up on machines all the time. Or like what? Yeah. Was yeah. She basically it was full time. We it was full time care. The doctors did not. They said that she wasn't going to live past three days old. I mean, three, she really, three days, three, three days. W- then it turned to three weeks. It will, that, that's three years three because years. Yeah. she, she uh, received two liver transplants. We were so fortunate, but her care. And so also was predicate um, on me having to take care of her yeah. and becoming a 24 Caregiver. hour now. And, and in that process, her dad who didn't understand any of this, all he knows is this is a sick child. I don't know how to interact with her. I don't know. I'm this. Yeah. So he did it. His, his, he chose interaction was none, which means I'm not going to the hospital. We lived in Greenville. The baby was in the hospital in Dallas, which at that time there were no tollways. It, it was yeah. a two could be an hour and a half to two hour drive. So that depended on me to stay at the hospital because so now you can see where this is going, mm-hmm. where I had my to, mom is absent and yeah. I'm always with grandmother yeah. or spending time with my dad. So I am in the middle of re- regardless of everything that y'all had going on. I'm the sitting there of, in the middle of it, yeah. of all the trauma of it all, the trauma of it all. And then and then so then now you meet this other guy. How was he? What's the age difference? Um, the guy you we were to marry. close to the same age. Church musician, serve. This is the crazy the thing. Damn is church musicians. Her, her, <laughs> his, his mother. Okay, let me let me uh, because I'm gonna say this. Jessica, what you gotta get church musician? I, I'm I, no, I'm gonna say. Let me say this. She she's talking about the church musician, but his mother delivered Jessica. It, it was. And, she, his mother's a nurse. Oh, really? And his mother. That's an interesting connection. Very interesting. But that's why like this is why I can honestly say <laughs> that like everything that happened, although it was a tough journey, but God makes zero mistakes. Right. Which means that whatever situation he gave us. We're here today and we were up for that task. So when I look back at every step, even from the man that that she couldn't stand delivering, his mother delivering her, God ordered. There was no step that was not ordered. Right. And it took me a long time. To because if you heard her telling that story, you'd be like, "Ooh, Jessica, Mama was for the streets." But <laughs> in the context, it was I now understand that everything from it's being so molested, from being so marrying a man who was. 15, let me ask you. Let me ask you this, Michelle. Why you say that? What you said? I wouldn't think it was for the streets. No, nah, it sounded like Papa was a Rolling Stone. Mama was here. Mama was that. Mama was no, a Rolling no, Stone. You, you were married at so. But I mean, there's lots of people who have been married three saying. or four times, and that's just the re- th- that's the realness of it all. But I well, mean, what the key is, I want to know how you got three people to marry you. But we'll get that later. But the, the thing, because a lot of friends I know, women I can can't t- get I'll one teach time. You okay, to get, so, I tell people that all the time, girl, y'all out here looking for a husband. Y'all can't get one. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. And, so, and trust and believe, she'll tell you it was never a downgrade anytime. Time, it was a blessing. That's why I say you, you, I, I regret nothing because every brick, he took it and he put it where it needed to be. Well, cool. We're going to get there. Okay. So, so, so now you married to this new guy, y'all closer to the same age. Um, what was your relationship with your daughter? When did you ever come? When did you come back? Did she stay? Their dad raised her till she graduated high school. Like, what's that story? So I now I do remember this mm-hmm. when they got married. I made the choice to stay with my dad. Okay. Um, because I did not like husband number two. Right. Why? Never mind. Then what happened? Yeah, I yeah, yeah you're, I just think you don't reveal too much. So uh, yeah, let's just, just 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 leave yeah. that there. Yeah. Um. So I chose to stay with my dad. Um. Now, when I went to live with my mom, that was now in my teen years. I believe I was in the seventh grade. And actually, what happened with that is my dad decided that he was going to move to Dallas to be closer to work, and he also got married. And 
I did not like my dad's wife either at the time. So you were like, I don't like this over here. I don't like here. Yeah, now I know. I sound. I really sound like I was just really it's hard t- to plead, Vir- please, Virgos. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying it was a lot of transition. And, you know, here's the thing. I got used to it just being me and my dad. And now my dad goes and he marries this woman that has three kids. And I'm like... Here Wait, I go again. She, she left out the girlfriend before that. Oh, the no, living okay. girlfriend with her he dad. He did have a long that. time living girlfriend, but I, <laughs> I will say. If you gotta tell it, then you, you like gotta it, tell it, it all. Damn near. Cr- okay, anyway, anyway. Um, so. <laughs> so she telling. Tell it all. <laughs> <laughs> tell me, you talked about the boyfriend I had before right. my husband. Talk about his girlfriend he had before his husband. 304 dad, daddy. In different. Uh, he, he 304 in Please don't do my daddy like this. She's Please. An <laughs> Please. 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 Okay, yes, so my dad had a girlfriend, but I liked her. And let me tell Michelle, you. what's wrong with you? Me. How you say in the national? Well, her daddy's girlfriend name was Mary. <laughs> oh, daddy go get wait, you. So, wait, Michelle, why you been petty? Huh? Why you been petty? Petty. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm a truth teller. See how y'all be putting labels on truth? Don't like it when you tell it. If you're going to tell it, <laughs> then you got to. <laughs> Tell it all. See why I don't take my mama serious. <laughs> Tell Do it you all. see? Do you see? <laughs> what, she, what, what is this about? Why she make the voice so out of So actually, let me tell you something. Me. Let me tell you the other things. So yes, the, here's the kind of things that I experienced and witnessed as a child since we but telling it all. Mary. I did like Mary. Why? And because Mary... Um, Mary was actually a good girlfriend to my dad. My dad, as my mom oh, I said, thought she was gonna say she was a good girlfriend to me. Like we were friends. <laughs> no, I remember for like that period of time, whenever my mom was out, you say it was two months, but I felt like it was longer than that. She used to take my sister to the doctor. She made sure like our hair was done. She put me in drill team. I had dance classes. I hate when I have to be the truth teller. Hold up. Wait, no, but let me tell her. you this. I remember I had a birthday party. And my mom. It wasn't a birthday party. It was at Mazio's Pizza. <laughs> exactly. You you they would never a have a birthday, birthday party celebra- at Mazio's. Stop it. <laughs> never. It was it was thoughtful. It was not even. And cla- we went it was out thoughtful. to eat. <laughs> My mom, <laughs> okay, my mom thoughtful. and my aunt, they came to Mazio's Just and my mom tell the took... whole story. Nobody knew where you were. I went to school to pick you up and you and and I get to the school and the teacher's like, she's not here. And I'm like, well, where is she? So my mom and my aunt, my aunt had a gun. My trifle, her trifling aunt. My mom, my aunt had a gun, and they show up at Mazio's Pizza. Took my without food, the gun. They left the gun in the car. Took the pizza and dumped it in Mary's head. I, I, we dumped so it on. You see wait the a minute, kind we dumped of it on that I had to Mary's head. They Not Mary. It. We dumped it on and Mary. And then grabbed my hand and we walked out. And I remember just thinking, she had like, been missing for. Four, five hours, and nobody knew where she was. Y'all dumped the piece on the lady head. So I'm just saying, you know, Hold like on, Michelle, y'all didn't jump, dump the piece on the lady. We head. did not dump the pizza. If you're gonna tell it, tell it all. We did not dump the pizza on the lady's head. We dumped the spaghetti. <laughs> That's worse. Exactly. It was just like, <laughs> do you see the things? That is worse. Do you see? The <laughs> she had she had noodles. They were just like, and she was just she was sitting like this. there like. But notice, I'm not calling her Mary. And if it was Mary, Meek and, Mon- Meek, Meek and Umble, and not humble as they used to say it. I'm from the old school. They're Meek and Umble. Uh, umble. Yes. If it was Meek and Umble, Mary, that never would have happened. Like, why is my child, why was I not notified? Y'all are looking like a happy family. <laughs> That's what got you right there. No, That's right. What got you. Because That's what got I will you. say, I we with Mary, I, I would did tell you what get really to... got me though. It was it wasn't that they got me. It was that I had my trifling sister, my backup with me that I felt confident confident enough. Because to... she she was one was of them like, type of aunties. Yeah, and take that. Uh. And I'm sure it was her that was like, come on, Michelle, we finna get up here and we gonna get her. It was. We gonna get her. It was. And they sure did. And come up in there and did that. What did you think? You, so it was you and your sister with her? I don't need Natalie. Natalie was in the hospital. Natalie was in the hospital. She man. was in the hospital. And so, what you think as a young girl? You was how old around that time? But she didn't know. No, what you the, mean? I didn't know. No, 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 no. She didn't know the trifling the under that. That's what I'm saying. It's always a backstory but, but to she, it. But she's seeing. But she's seeing. I'm all, saying all she it, and I'm it living it. If your child was missing for four hours, and I, the school, this is the school didn't even know 
Who took her? She wasn't even there. So I was like, I bet Austin picked her up. Um, that's how, did her daddy. You, how did you find out that I was at Mazio's? We in Greenville, Texas, and your daddy drove a blue Malibu. <laughs> it, it's like, where? I, so what's the name of the street? It's only one main street through Greenville. Uh, Joe Ramsey. No. What is it? Uh, uh, Wesley. Yeah. So you drive that out. Oh, gosh. There, and that's what we did. And there it is. That, that's his car right there. Baby, we rolled up in there. Give me my child and, and so have how a plate old of you spaghetti. Doing that time? Nine, ten. No, 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 no. I feel like I was more closer to like, actually, you're right. Maybe right, because eight, nine. Mazio's pizza, you every time we was having a party, I'm like, oh, that was really tacky. And Mazio, right, yeah. that says enough to me, his character, <sighs> at Mazio's pizza. Stop. <laughs> that woman is still alive and she is very nice. Amen. Stop. Oh, she probably I'm, watches this podcast. That was then, and this is now. That <laughs> no. was the oh, stop! Thank God for Please. favor and transition. Yes, Lord Make a Jesus. Difference. Won't he do it? We go. Okay, so let let us get back to why you didn't move. You yes. Didn't, you didn't so move. my dad it marries this woman that has three kids, and I'm like, I'm not dealing with that. So I decided that I was going to. What do you mean the new wife? You talking about the, the girlfriend was cool. The wife. The yeah. So he, her dad is a Steve Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a, he married, you know, I, Marjorie. You mar- he you married the M's. Mom. Wait, okay, <laughs> Y'all you can see, cut that out. Yeah. So see. your daddy had Mary, Margaret, and Michelle. That's Steve Harvey. He had Mary, and uh, what's uh, his wife he with now? See, this Mar- is why she don't know how to behave. <laughs> I'm just saying your daddy did the Steve Harvey. He had three women with an M. All of Steve Harvey's exes had M's. We gonna get back to it. So we got a thing for the M's, but go ahead, girl. So tell your story. So, yes, seventh grade, my dad he gets married oh to a woman, tell and me. that wasn't Mary. This one was Margaret. Lord Jesus, and I was just like, Mm-mm, I ain't doing this. So because my mom, uh, I think my sister was getting ready to go through her second liver transplant. Um, I was like, I'm going to stay with my cousins because I'm not going to stay How with my mom. How that work out for you? Go ahead. If you're going to tell it, then you got to tell it. How that work out for you? Um, <laughs> What kind of bird don't sing? Oh, stop. <laughs> you want me to be quiet now? She done told all my business. <laughs> <laughs> want me to have a cup of shut up? Here, let me go ahead. Hold on. A cup of shut up. <laughs> We ain't going to be able to make it through the rest of this. <laughs> she said you want to have a cup of shut up. <laughs> okay. So how'd that work out for you? <laughs> well, I mean, it was nice, but it didn't work out so great. <laughs> so, mm, we just going to skip on through that. Let me just drink a little no, more. No, actually, of, cup of shut up. I'll say this. So I ended up ha- after that one year of seventh grade. Um, it didn't work I out. I won't give you a dose of your medicine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm, I can get there. I would be more than happy to get there and share the truth. Girl, we could. No, in that one year in seventh grade. It's with, hidden. No, in living with, in living God with my cousins. God. In living with my cousins, I didn't start my my bad behavior until I started living with you. Because what she hold up, I don't mind people knowing that I've been she in jail. Told, wait a minute, she done told you how terrible. Oh, I was terrible to all of them, but now all of a sudden, remember that. I'm just saying because I know what you're talking about, and it didn't that didn't happen until I moved. I lived with Michelle you. Michelle was meek and humble. I was a servant of the Lord. Oh, Jesus. And the seed that was born to me. <sighs> well, the seed that was born to you, Michelle. I'm Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> We're not gonna talk about them flowers that was sent to Nigeria, girl. Niger- all the way to Nigeria. You remember you, that credit card? <laughs> and I was like, oh, "Did you send flowers to Nigeria?" Oh Lord, but, Mom, when was this I... stuff? When was this? This was you not in. No, but this was not in. Like, we're going in chronological order, so <laughs> mm-hmm. we are. We are okay. So yeah, I I don't even know where to go from here. We're gonna go from now. You living with your cousins? Things not going ideal over there. Yeah, one year with the cousins, and then we had 
eighth grade, I'm now living with my mom. So now you come back to mom. Yes. All right. Yes. Living her best life. <laughs> I, Girl, you know you did, when you came back say you, I did I will say thank you I did well she should have been all along but see she trying to it mm-hmm. was my mother my mother my mother Those were, no choices, so, so, so when, she, when you came back she was married she was still married to a second husband he was he was, was on his way out the door so you came back while they're going through a divorce but it was this was this was a much needed so it was it wasn't like it was dun 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 so it wasn't a bad divorce it was it, it was it a was let's amicable. get this baby you was right let's get this mofo up out of here right. right and then you got a divorce and your daughter was coming back into the house yeah and we, but what she should tell you is that even in this process god is still good god Be, is still because very the good. come up it was never a situation of where we were no never. that's one thing i will say is and, and living with my mom, I never, ever had to experience that. She didn't lack. know she was poor. Yeah. <laughs> I never had to experience that. Oh, we like, made uh, it the, good times fun. We did. We did. Um, and I very much thank God <laughs> for my mom for that. Um, Lord, we, never a dull moment. You said you said she she didn't know y'all was poor, so you you you're saying that you could take a little bit and make it a great experience. That's what you were saying? Or were y'all living good? Now we lived no, in the hood. We, yeah, we we lived in the hood. We were very much, but it in was the hood. Good. good. But we made the, the most of it. it. Those were some of our happier. Yes. I had both of my girls with me, and we laughed every. We did. I can day. Tell. We did. Every we, day. Yes. We but we fought every day too. <laughs> Cause so trust we and did. believe when she left out of the house, it was I'm going back to stay with my daddy. Uh, yes until mommy was like okie dokie and i packed her bags and when she came home from school her daddy was sitting right there go call my bluff and those are the type of she, things she that like, we went through i don't want to okay i was just bluffing i don't really want to go stay with dad i really didn't i didn't think so by austin <laughs> we good <sighs> the trauma of it all she, she, she calling this trauma, but this was her. This her was trying her to best. manipulate y'all. Now, did she ever try to play y'all against each other? No. <laughs> okay, notice she exactly. She you don't... say I want to go live there, but you really don't want to live there. If you keep saying I'm gonna go stay with my daddy, and then she goes, "I right, go stay," and you be like, "No, nah, I'm just playing." Well, Jessica, I'll... okay, she's a Virgo, and then you know how Nigerians, you know how they they number one for the scam thing. <laughs> Y'all didn't hear me say that, but <laughs> Jessica that on her true so Nigerian wrong. side, <laughs> and you got the nerve to ask me. Did I apologize she play y'all on my mom's behalf other? to my Nigerian you, people you, because we are we are, we are not all scammers. I'm, I'm just saying we all family, okay? But <laughs> y'all so see she, what I got to deal with. She worked it to her advantage, and mind you, Jessica has. At that time, she had a nene, which was my sister. So she good. Jessica, Jessica is good. I like your business moves, but it's good with whoever if it, whoever benefits me today in the family. That's how she was. She learned how to make it work for her. Daddy, you good? To, oh, you got your check today? Okay. Why does lady say she's on Nigerian side? <laughs> she did. Like she, she and she, I just. But with Jessica, like she, and she know how to get me. Like Jessica, baby, I don't even know what to say. <laughs> Look, she and she knows she gets me every day. But because, like, she's I, a text I sent her saying, "Hey, this is toxic." Because oh, I we now, gonna get there. We gonna get yes. there. We gonna, we gonna get how we get there. So, so the, that's how good she is. So when y'all get to this relationship, so y'all had this. On again, y'all laughing with each other, but then she wanting to leave, all this type of stuff. Did it ever get to a head as teenagers? When you were a teenager, in your teenage years, did it ever get into some really situation where it may have gone to blows or where she had to kick you out? Or <laughs> but I, I, we did have those moments, but I think it was but more man. so like when I got in my t- my <clears throat> like late teens. Do you like remember the shower the scene? Oh, we had a shower scene. Well, we was wrestling, and I knew then. How y'all wrestling in the shower? What you talking about? She was talking. 
talking ish. I have a very smart mouth. While you was in the shower? No, we like was, we and we're in the, the bathroom. bathroom. Oh, okay. And y'all just fell into the shower. But I tried to pull a Vera. That's my mama. Where, where, it didn't quite work. Where my mama, you, you know, she's gonna, she's gonna before you, you knew like, it. Oh, yeah, my I'm mama was a man. What you say? So you hit her and she hit you back. Baby. Jessica's stronger than an ox. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't care if I am from Milanville, Texas, and my mama did do all of this stuff. Baby, I was like, I'm, I have met my match. I'm done. There will be no more of that. Don't mess with me. So I had to be think. No more <laughs> right. So, I so had what to, happened? Walk this out. What happened? What happened that 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 you hit her and then what happened? I don't even remember what happened. That she was always t- Jessica. As much as she say that she don't know how to talk ish, but she w- she keep da- 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 yes. yeah, jabbing you. Now she's 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 subtle with it. She's just like mm hmm mm hmm. Watch. So now she's more like mm, okay, I get you. But back then she had to be like la 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 la, and then you popped her, and then she did what? She she wrestled you. I think I was trying to hem her up to tell her, girl. I brought you in this world. I will take you out, but my him up. <laughs> Your him up didn't work. <laughs> What'd you it was, do, Jessica? It was you more like I, it was more like I got him up. <laughs> and I just remember in that moment, like both of us fell into the tub, and then the shower curtain came down, the whole rod came down, and then and my her sister, face kind of looked like I know I'm gonna really be grounded. <laughs> for this because I know she knows she can't get me but yeah my grounding my grounding and my yeah I will yeah I will say I don't think after that like she never tried that again <laughs> no I just stuck to the grounding yeah. and she was just like okay mom I hope you know I can kick the screen off the window and do whatever I want to do without yeah. you knowing you used to run away I mean I used to... okay I stole my mom's car once a few times I'm gonna have a couple. Did you drive? Up. I did. Did you have a license? Who taught you how to drive? One of your boyfriends. <laughs> Notice they always a deadbeat, but he could. He was girl, but he could cook though, couldn't he? He could, but he was a deadbeat. He made some bologna spaghetti. You remember that? I do remember, and girl. We thought we was like this. Girl. I do. Um, he could cook though, and he could clean house better than anyone. Yeah, but I knew I was like, I'll never want a man like that. May he that. rest in peace. Mm. <laughs> well, she's <laughs> never. He that was a, he's not a my musician. Portion. You see why I said musicians? But see, what Run. she won't tell you is that I'm a musician, and you th- are. Should I say how? I, uh, and seeing and seeing that, I was like, mm, this is not for me. This is not for me. It's, you did, did you try say to go. He made some bologna spaghetti. With those, with weenies, too. Weenies, yeah. Weenies. Yeah, we, 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 yeah. bologna and weenies. Mm. Won't he do it? Gosh. Rest easy, Gary. She said rest in peace. Rest yeah. in peace. He's, on, he's gone on to glory. Gone mm. on to glory, playing mm. the piano for the Lord. He's singing in the heavenly <laughs> choir. I'm sure you're probably like, what did I get myself into? Singing no, Having when? this mom and daughter the heavenly on the choir. Show. He's singing in the heavenly choir now. Mm. No, what I'm getting is this is one of my favorite episodes because I like it when people I like how y'all can go and y'all argue with each other and then y'all start laughing, cracking jokes, and people gonna say your mom did a whole podcast by herself. Just watch they gonna comment. We used to have a podcast, (laughs) but Jessica, Uh Jicky Jessica, would would have she would have a couple of jickies. It's it's because she would say things. She just got drunk. The last (laughs) podcast I did with her. (laughs) <laughs> she called her and, Jiggy and I Jessica. kept telling her I said Jessica we're not going to be able to use nothing for this and baby you her drinks she, was, she, she kept is, drinking on the podcast she is the one that says stuff and I'm like we can't say things like that I'm like, like what yes, she you can. said about 90% of what she said just yes, but it's, you y'all can. know it's true though right google it <laughs> that's, okay. across my and legs. that's why we don't have our podcast <laughs> we don't have a podcast because we had a fight Tell the truth. If that you're gonna tell it, then you gotta tell it. <laughs> what, what happened? She what damn happened? near cried when she got that phone call from me telling her we ain't gonna be able to use it. We done paid the videographer. And girl, you up here no, drunk. No, no. Because my mom, she drunk. be, no, let me tell you, my mom, and this is where that toxic text message comes up. Because, you know, we'll do things. And my mom, she's such a joker. And I'd be like, mom, sometimes we need to talk about serious things. But she was drunk. <laughs> <laughs> we couldn't use none of that could we in fact she was like she called me she said mom you were right 
Because I was like, we did a whole video of nothingness. <laughs> like you, she, she was. <laughs> Why was you drunk, well, Jessica? I don't even remember. Who was the podcast guest? You was that drunk you remember? Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> Do y'all see what I be dealing with? We, we hold up. Exactly. Look, we I was like, we are, are, oh god. I asked her that. I said, "Who is this? Why she here?" No, she had a good story though. She did. She did. Jessica, the question is, why was you drunk? I just the our podcast was called Dish and Dine, and we'd have a chef not drunk and dine, not drunk and drive, because Jessica was drunk and driving that wheel. I was like, Damn, we, she is I crashing. like I like having like, my wine and have dish and dine, and we'd have a glass of wine, and so I was like, you know what? Look, yes, we're gonna loosen up, and that's what it was. And I'm kind of like you, like let's get this done. I got places to be, da 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 da, and I'd be like, baby. Jessica was still sitting on the couch, the lighting crew packing up, the videographer going, and she's still. <sighs> <laughs> Wait, and, and we were filming, some of them we were filming my house. Baby, I was turning lights off, and, and the one girl was allergic to cats. I was like, I'm opening up the, the door, let the cat out, like, y'all got to go home. She over here just it, drunk. It cannot, it, I don't think I was that drunk. Mm. Oh, I think I still have the footage on the computer. I'm going to turn back around so I can oh, say it. on the computer. Lord. Okay, so she sent you a text message. Sent you a text message. This was last year, right? Yeah. And what did that text message say in summation? Mm. And how did we get there? Um, basically, she was saying, hey, I think that our relationship is toxic. And I think we need some time away from each other. I'm getting tired of y'all or you always. That was y'all. Yeah, y'all. <laughs> I included the whole family. In <laughs> your husband and your two children. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm getting tired of y'all always. Calling, calling me. me when you let me tell y'all typed it. <laughs> what you said? No, I but y'all don't text me unless y'all want something. If it's mom, can you watch the kids? Can you pick them up from school? Um, and, that, th and then she got to the point where she would just have the children call me, so she, her phone would call me, and and I would push answer, and it's the two children. They're like, but they're your grandkids. Come get us. But it's your grandkids. And I I'm don't like, mind it. No, she'll tell you. I, I, I enjoy keeping them a whole weekend. So you need to change so that to Saturdays. And hey, what time are y'all okay, coming to pick press, them up? Or I'm going to drop she, them off you at what, what time? Day she said? Saturday. What you be doing? So, And who did I have last night? You had Jedi. But and what was last night? Did we ask night? you? We didn't ask <laughs> Friday. you. Friday. Friday. Wait, wait, wait. We didn't Pana, ask you. I, you I'm going to have a couple shut up again so she can get this out so I can't make a point. <laughs> I keep her cheering on the prime weekend. So her but and you, husband. That's, but that's your, you are a grandmother. <laughs> Big mama did that for me when you got to. Big mama did that because your sister was sick. No. Big mama uh -uh. had a whole house of cheering. Do you get what I'm saying? When I had no work. You no kids no more. You saying I want to, I want to be free. She's a grandmother. So what does that mean? So what is the boundaries of a grandma? But I mean, we give her her boundaries. I'll give her that. But here's I, I want to get because the text message when it's toxic. First off, I felt like when it I comes said it was to, toxic because, like I said, you oh, gonna oh, let me oh, know. Oh, 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 so you you sent the text message. What did you? What I were called, you trying to articulate? And I'm a, I want to hear how Jessica received it. Okay, I'm. I was in my feelings. Mm hmm. And I really was. And when she's because, in her feelings. Hold on, hold on. You, you going to interpret it? Here you go. My mom, if, as toxic as it was, she would cook and we would gather. And hold so, on. I want to hear your text message. So uh, that, it, that it was toxic. You Y'all only call me when y'all need something. So until we get this fixed, don't call me. Don't be calling me and ask me to do this because I ain't going to do it. So you want to call the counselor or you want me to call it? Good. But she never so she, called so she the counselor. So she suggested counseling. How did she receive the text message? So I did not receive that text message very well. And the reason why I did not receive that text message very well is because that's not the first time I've gotten 
it, it wasn't said in that way. But anytime it's time to sit down and talk about things, we never talk about it. So even after that text message, even, you know. Hold uh, on, before we get the text message. So you didn't receive it well. Did you hear anything that she said? Did, did you ever consider, let's go to counseling? She she introduced yes, the next phase. I did. I, I did say, you know what? I and I responded back to her and said, we should go to counseling. And because she brought it up first, I'm like, you find the counselor. Did you tell her that? Or yes, did you, I did. You assume that? And I told her, I told her in the text message, we can get my phone right now. And I told her, you find the counselor and I want you, I'm placing that back on you because if you were the one that could come to me and tell me that our relationship Fair is enough. toxic, then you find the counselor and I'm ready when you are. Did you ever have plans on getting the counselor, Michelle? Um, Jessica. She so let me tell you what she did. If you gonna tell it, then you <laughs> but gotta this tell was, it all. This was, I like how she just leave it there. Like no. Who, so here's what she did. What a, she sent pause. me a list. Let me. You know, Jessica's a Virgo, and Jessica is very, believe in all that very picky. She's very picky. So I sent her. I don't want this one. I don't want this one. She put all these stipulations. So I did pick some. Sent it to her. Oh, she sent a list of counselors? She sent me a list, and I actually went With, through for the her, list. Exactly. I did. I took the time to go through the list, and I actually emailed three of them. And what do you know? None of them responded back. These were all African-American counselors, and none of them responded back. Did you bring said receipts? You, we, can go, we can go through my emails. And I actually thought about that so before we came. You got to come. We still have you not got been to, to come counseling. with the receipts. So, you so, see, so this was last year. Y'all never went to counseling. So you thought the no. process stopped with Ma. That Ma dropped the ball. But no. But the thing you is, we still don't talk. I see, even without a counselor, we have to get to a place where we actually talk about things because that text message. Mm -mm, it's just like I feel like you just. Sh Cut us off when you're upset. It's or something you on your forehead. Down. I don't mean to be rude, but your forehead say unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not unavailable. How, how how does it go when you and Jessica be contacting each other? What? So this is this is yeah, I can get a hold of her. But like I said, her the phone call be like even if I Facetime, it's like. So let me give you. Let me tell you why. She'd be multitasking. I mean, no, 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 having, no, no. Let me let me uh, tell you my uh, word uh, for it. It's we, called a conversation. I have a conversation with myself whenever I'm talking to Jessica. It's like I, she's, because she's doing the, other things. So look at how my mom is dancing around this the, right now. We're dancing around no, I'm, what I'm, I'm really trying to what get. What you trying to say? Because there has been plenty of opportunities for us to sit down and talk about the real issue. So let me give you an example. When. Jedi had his graduation mm -hmm. and I don't know what you got upset about. In fact, I remember I went, I took Jedi to the restroom. I come back to the table and I'm trying to give you a hug like, bye. And then I get a text. Y'all need to find somebody else to watch the kids. Cause I'm not doing it. And we didn't hear from you for like three weeks. And I'm like, okay, here she goes. She's in one of her modes. So I, I sure was you exactly. You were. So <laughs> I'm, I'm like, and here's what I did. Let me tell you what I was like. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to have to create boundaries right. because here I am. I'm about to take myself through this thing. Not again. realizing that that was my boundary. But we, I don't know what your boundary was. Because she don't know what's, I don't know don't what's know, wrong she, with she, you. She don't know the catalyst for it. We don't know. And, and All so, I know is you, I walk out the bathroom everybody's getting ready to leave and all of a sudden we're like okay bye trying to give you a hug and then we get this text message i'm not doing this and i feel like when she gets upset about something what she does is i'm not gonna watch the kids or i'm not gonna be able to do this for you and i'm like if you're upset about I mean, something would you want somebody mad watching your kids no no but also, but <laughs> just communicate yeah just if you're communicate. upset about something talk about it share what it is and then right. on top of that three weeks later we ain't heard from you she called me hey girl and I'm like, but we still haven't dealt with what was the issue over right. here, you know? And that's what it is. And so you've seen, uh, y'all haven't had a moment where y'all been able to unpack years of situations. Um, or do you feel like y'all dealt with it? Do you feel like y'all dealt with it? No. no. So that's what I'm saying. So it's, it's years of compounded trauma that y'all haven't addressed. I like the fact that Michelle said, let's bring a counselor in here, a neutral party, to come and have this conversation. Um, unfortunately, it's been almost a year, and that hasn't taken place. Uh, and so hopefully y'all prioritize that. Get down and get down into it and show up and share whatever. I mean, we need a part two after 
intentionally going through counseling. Exactly. Anybody want to counsel <laughs> us, please? One that will actually <clears throat> respond. And they were all black women that we reached out to here in the DFW. No response. No response. No response. Watch, you're going to get a whole lot of them because I know a lot oh, of Oh, I'm sure. I would love it. And I get people, I, I have actually, even for myself, and I'm like, well, dang, what's going on? Everybody talking about they going to therapy. I'm like, what therapy y'all going to? Because. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I had problems finding one for my son for probably about six months. And especially when you're intentional, you say, I want to, he wanted a black male. It was so hard finding a black At male. At this point, I'll and take a I white one. And then I just said, one. all right, we're going to get a, a, a white guy and call yeah, it a day. Mm-hmm. I'll take a white one. So if you yeah. white, yeah. We'll, we'll take a white one. Because I was looking for black female. And I was just like, mm, that. I guess that's not working because they just not responding. There's going to be a whole lot of them that's going to respond to you, um, especially after this. Um, and so the good thing about it is the willingness to do it. Both of y'all are saying the problem that typically happens is one person says, especially old school, will sit there and be like, all right, people ain't finna be in our business. What happens in my house? Stay in the house. I ain't finna go tell these people about it. nothing about going on my house. You have a mom that's willing to say, let's do it. Matter of fact, she encouraged it. She initiated it. And so that's beautiful in and of itself. And the cool thing that I see what happens with y'all, which you have no idea, probably, you can't even see it from the outside looking in, that's so healthy in y'all situation is y'all give each other the space to talk. Like y'all, y'all literally talking. Like, like y'all, most people don't even say nothing. They won't even talk. They just be like, I don't like you because you're using me. You manipulate me. I'm this whatever. <laughs> and they shut down. Those three weeks become three years. So even to know that y'all have these moments where she may say that in three weeks, does she ever actually go forward with it for the whole three weeks? Or does she come back around and <clears throat> somehow she end up picking up the kids anyway? Yeah. Yep. That's what she ended up Because I miss my grandkids. That's what I'm saying. She so don't she, miss she, me. She, she uses that as <clears throat> she uses that as power and manipulation to try to get you to do whatever it is, but she's not fully communicating that which she needs you to do. So you're left in this ambiguity because you're sitting there going, What made you do that? What just <clears throat> happened? And so you're feeling this whatever. And and it's literally what I see is years of stuff that y'all may encounter it. Laugh about it, sweep it under the rug, mm. but it's never been dealt with. Yep. We sweep a lot of stuff under the <laughs> do, rug. Do, do we sweep stuff under the rug now? No, I think we're we're more open now. So since y'all want to know why I got up and left that night. Yes, please, because I still don't know why you <laughs> left that night. I don't well, know. See, what she's negating is my father-in-law was there. And I don't get along with my father-in-law. And he had said something. Wait, okay, I'm trying. Yeah. And I was just like, oh, gosh. So and then my grandson was being Tasmania. Is that how you say it? Yeah, Tasmanian devil. I wasn't going to put that D on there, but he was being the Tasmanian. So, and, and she know her son. <laughs> he was like, so he needed help doing this. And every time I would touch that, he was like, don't do that. Gigi, move. I hate you, Gigi. And I was like, he didn't say oh, that, no. did he? You know what? I, this is not working for me tonight. We going to try this in three weeks. <laughs> I said on the third week, like the third day. And she, and on, no, but it the worked thing out is, just fine. She could have easily just not Because did you want me to say, no, 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 that didn't work. No, Jedi, I would have preferred. Son, Let me we had taken you. a whole trip to Puerto Rico. No. And he was. Oh, <laughs> don't get me started on Puerto Rico. No. Uh-huh. Women, girl, mm-hmm. you, women, I had to tell them. Cause so they, they got this We will thing. never take my mom on a trip <laughs> again. I don't want to go. She Wait is not. Not. <laughs> <laughs> She's not welcome. Wait a minute. I need for you to have a cup of hush up right now. Yeah. Because where did you just invite me to? Where y'all going the end I of the did. month? Well, I did. And what did I tell you? you she, well, no. you invited no, 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 no. I what, want to get a complete you thought. invited on, me. She talking about she don't want me to go. But Hold what on, did Michelle. I tell Michelle, Michelle. Yeah. you? Did. Let me, you let me, I don't want to go. Michelle, let me tell you why on. we invited her to Jamaica. So yeah, we are taking. Yes, we, we are taking a family vacation to Jamaica. And you invited your mom. Yes, I invited my mom, and here's why: because my your father in law and your mother in law. They were like, well, make sure you invite your mom. You don't want her to feel a certain type of way since you invited your dad and his wife. So Fair I was enough. like, you know what? A couple mind your business. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you I don't like them. Oh, Lord. I love them folks. <laughs> Oh my god they yeah, are the nicest the, people they are so wonderful they are great you like who you like i like who i like this is what but I i'm can't glad say. you have a great Please. relationship with your parents your grandparents so that you said to balance it out i want to invite my mom and she said no i'm not going she after she, she just told you i want to go 
Yeah. She don't want me to go. She said she didn't want you to go because whatever just, happened. I knew then. she was going to say no. I knew she wasn't going to say, oh, I'm, of course I'm coming because my mother in law is also and coming. You want, as and you well. want to make sure that you say that so she can't use that against you later. And like, y'all invite you. Didn't invite we me invited to the you. And, and she, I know that's why she was inviting me because she <laughs> she know that you don't hang out. We don't fool with them people like that. Uh, I need us much. to get it together on if this we, soil. Yes. Before, before we, you go get on some other soil. Let us break bread together. So can y'all do this? On our knees. So can you do this, Michelle? Praise and worship leader. Can y'all can y'all intentionalize, prioritize counseling? And do you like because you know, a lot of times people don't have to like, even with the her her dad and his wife, whatever, they ain't got to get along, so to speak, but then you can respect each other when y'all are oh, in the same space. Great. Oh, okay, we do then. family. We yeah, do fa- so why you want to go? Year? Why you say that then? Why you say you don't want to be around there? My mom so is, she's a when diva. I'm here, she's a diva. When I'm she's here, a diva. I can go to whatever direction I need to go, but when we're on another soil. She got to have, I, I, I need my sleeping pills. I, oh my God. Uh, do you hear all those animals back girl, there? We the, in the Caribbean. Them, them animals was uh, like, oh, when girl. we go to sleep, why they didn't do that? when we was awake like I want to go to sleep I mean it's just one thing or the other and I'm like ain't nobody got time for that the chef cooking us a nice meal and Which was I don't good. eat I don't I eat it, bottom, it. But see, I don't she eat bottom feeders out. she leaving out the Tasmania so you talking about her kid her, her son her son get on your nerves basically what you're saying <laughs> they, Pretty much what they you're have saying. a very interesting relationship they play a lot my son he is a practical joke he, he fun but when he he get in his he, mood he, sometimes when he like when Michael he, Jackson I'm bad <laughs> real bad <laughs> and and they got this thing is you know how salon just would don't touch my hair they like don't touch my child we oh, are so ge- so we are gentle parenting so that's what it is that's I, I what it, it is so that's good so i understand what it is so she's saying and granny don't play that exactly so she's saying your child is out of control I need to beat your kid. You said nah, I ain't going to be. When, you, don't, you don't whoop my kid. Apparently, baby. she says that he doesn't act. He only he acts act like, like that when, when he's around. around us. Oh, because so when 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 she's with them solo, they act cool. We're best friends. But then when y'all get around, he just wants to show us behind. She know. Am I lying? Is she lying, Justin? <laughs> My, he, no, make me call wonderful. CPS on you. He, he is <laughs> for, wonderful for those moments when <laughs> I be wanting to strangle my son sometimes. When and, but he's he's a kid, you yeah. know. So you have to. So you have the grace for him. And, your, and, your, yeah. and, your and I love the that. old school baby. Yeah. All like, it yes. take is one good pop. Yes. <laughs> All it take is one. Let me do it, <laughs> please. Mm. So yes, yeah. yes. Just one good pop and we be good. Man, that's hilarious. Um, so we 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 we. we I like it. I like where we've landed. We've landed in a place where um, I love the fact that you y'all still are able to like I laugh at a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff that definitely uh, needs to be unpacked, which is what therapy is going to do for y'all. Talking about the childhood trauma, how that plays into how y'all show up in each other's life is going to show how much um, just the healing. Because what that's what I'm saying. What's so beautiful about it is that when you can still laugh with the person. That's so that's healthy. Well, but, I mean, you know, she's funny. I mean, she's my mom. Yeah. And something that my dad always tells me is your mom is your mom and you will always love your mom. You mm. cannot. There's nothing that she can do that will make you not have her in your life. And I believe that, which is one of the reasons why I'm so open to her. Daddy still love me. <laughs> you should see how he be looking at me at the family functions. I have to go Austin. Stop. <laughs> Like he don't want you, Michelle. I don't, don't want, want him either. I don't want him anyway, either. Anyway, but yes, I'm very open to us doing our counseling. <laughs> Hopefully we can get there and very soon. That was something that we told ourselves we were going to do this year because I strongly believe that we can't continue to sweep things underneath the rug. And, you know, I just believe that through our healing process, it's also going to heal other people. I have a daughter now and I want my daughter to see us in a healed yes. and thriving mother daughter relationship, yes. not 
you know, us, we can't sit down at the table and talk about things. We got to send each other text messages talking about, I think our relationship is toxic. I want us to actually be able to say, you know what? You did this. This offended me. Here's how I would have liked for you to have handled this situation or how I wanted you to say this. We need to be able to have conversations like that. See, she ain't never serious. Beat him. (laughs) She ain't never serious. You know when she said when she sent me a picture, she sent me a picture. You, I was like, uh, I said, send me a picture of your mom, or whatever. I said, this your mama. I don't know which one. The I thought you was like one of the sisters because on your on your Instagram, you look very much so sister. Every time we go Instagram out, poses. Every time we go, I out. I learned from her though. Like I learned really from what? No, uh-uh. you're more conservative. Uh, she's more conservative than you. That's... Have you looked at your Instagram? <laughs> See nothing but skin, legs, thighs. Right. I, I work hard. Total opposite. We go to the gym. She got to have a whole face on, her shorts on. People think I'm the older sister. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. And we go to the grocery store. Daughter, Do you know where we live? Where y'all live? I mean, she the one called me talking about, Mom, Shaq at the gym. <laughs> I'm like, so why wouldn't I be like, oh, girl, let me put my dentures in. I don't. <laughs> I mean, and I'll go look. <laughs> I'll go looking like, you know, whatever. But still, <laughs> they put my she really, in. people really do think I'm the older sister when we go out. I said, I'll be right there. <laughs> Michelle, this you got a whole me. husband at home. Right. Oh, wait a minute. Let me have a cup of egg, right? <laughs> <laughs> Oops. <sighs> I'm not for this does he, what, what, what does he say about, like, your Instagram? He don't. He don't say nothing. Mm-mm. Because most of the time he's taking the pictures. <laughs> like, babe, up, move, tilt it a little bit, you know. Oh, Lord. Toot your booty up. Yeah, yeah like, no, he's all for it, especially to be my age. And, again, my self-esteem, I never had it until my adult years. And still finding it every day. That's one of the reasons why I have to give my mom so much grace. Yeah. Yeah, I have to give a lot of grace. That's good. Yeah. And I've learned that over the years. And I think it wasn't until I think it was after I had Jedi. And you mean you can get paid for that stuff, too, now? You're talking about so, uh, influencer? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like when I she, like she. Yeah. I was like, OK. Yeah. She was like, don't post a picture without getting paid for it. Yeah. Yeah. Some of y'all that don't know, Jessica Chinulu is the sponsorship. I mean, she's I don't even say sponsorship lady. I'm going to say guru. Oh. You're the sponsorship guru. I met her uh, last year while she was pregnant with a child. And uh, my friend, uh, Sky Houston, hit me up. She said, if you're looking for a sponsorship lady, uh, this lady, what they show you in Essence or something? What magazine did they have? Forbes, Essence, Business Insider. Not to just like toot my own horn, but, <laughs> Cosmopolitan. you know. Cosmopolitan. Whatever oh. it was, she saw <laughs> one of those articles about you. And she was like, and I think she's right there in uh, Dallas Forward Metroplex. And I said, okay. So then I met up with you and we talked about some stuff, whatever. But uh, you got this amazing program that you have, which is a great transition. So you got this amazing program for those uh, who feel like you have something to offer, whether you have programs that you do, events, um, social media, uh, talk about what you're able to offer would-be clients. Yeah, so I teach people how to secure corporate sponsorships, and some people might not fully understand what that is. I always tell people, think about Super Bowl and how Super Bowl, they have a halftime show, and during that halftime show, it's sponsored by, I think it It used to be sponsored by Pepsi. Now it's Apple Music. But somebody has to actually go out there and close that deal. People like me do that. I don't do it on the sports side. I do it on the social impact side. So I have a ton of amazing clients. Most of my clients are black women who are killing it, uh, doing great and amazing big things. But my clients have gotten amazing sponsorship contracts with companies like J.P. Morgan Chase, um, Wells Fargo. Uh, I've done my own brand deals like with Container Store. Um, So many brands. I've worked with a lot of different companies. But. But I basically give you my entire process on a silver platter and I call my process the gift that just continues to keep on giving because once you learn what I teach you, you can apply this in every aspect in every area of your business for sure. How do they find out about it? 
All you got to do is go to www.thesponsorshiplady.com and you can just fill out an application to work with me or send me a DM on Instagram, you yeah. know, and I'll send you a link to sign up for my monthly membership where it's incredible. It's great. I'll put a link in the um I'll put a link in the bio. Do you have like an affiliate program yet? With, with, with? I sure do. Okay, and you so know, be, I can I'm look. He like, I'm, I'm going to be an affiliate. Yes. I'm going to be an affiliate. I'm mm-hmm. going to be an affiliate. I'm going to drop a link in the thing. And so those dear future wifey uh, supporters, the Lit Fam, y'all see a link in the bio. Uh, well, the link in the description of this video and make sure y'all reach out to us. So it's going to be dope. How do people stay connected with you, Michelle? All of my social media forms. So, you know, I'm old school, right? I'm a mama. And a grandma. So I'm big on the Facebook. The face and the book. The face and the book. The face and the book. <laughs> I'm also on IG. I'm also on TikTok under the Michelle Priest on all social media platforms. The Michelle Priest. Listen, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Thank y'all for the humor. Thank y'all for the laugh. Thank y'all for the vulnerability and transparency. I love y'all. Like, oh y'all my are God. such a great... Well, that means that we have to go to counseling now. And come back. And come back. We'll have to talk about and, the part two. And another thing, I want to talk to your husband. Okay. I want to talk to your husband. I, I, I definitely want to talk to your husband. But I want to talk to your husband because... <laughs> That's, Man, you do know he white. I know he white. That's why I want to talk to him. He white. Yeah, I want to talk to him. That's why I want to talk nice. to him. We had a couple on, I mean, my my good friend Cassie uh, and her husband. They live right around the corner from us, actually. Oh, was like, there it is. Now. Yeah. Yeah, Cassie, that's my people. We they always came... miss each other, so she's my best friend that I always miss. Well, y'all going to have to connect. <laughs> so they came on the podcast, uh, and everybody just loved them. That was one of my fastest growing episodes at that mm. time. So and she is partially responsible for the reason I'm with my husband. Why is it? Her and my daughter would see him at church and they would be like, why don't you date Eric? Really? He's, I mean, Eric, he's. That's cool. He's, he's an a, He is a really, and dad even said this, you know, the best husband that your mom has had is Eric. See, there y'all go again. The best, hu- like I done had a whole lot. Like, <laughs> well, he had, he had three. three. And he putting himself in the category. That says a lot. Mm. Yeah. If, if a man who's married to you that says the best you've ever had, he said including he, himself, is another guy. Oh, he said, inclu- he did say that? He yeah. has to be. He's oh, the best. Okay. He, I said, he, he said, I had so much peace. I have peace. We we all love Eric. And I met him at church. See, that's all right. Church. I met mine at the club. Church. (laughs) I met mine at the club. I did. Y'all give it up for my homie, Jessica Chen Yulu and Michelle Priest, (laughs) y'all. Ladarian thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, It was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have Been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. 
Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm Lateris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, I really enjoyed talking to <laughs> Jessica and her mom. Absolutely hilarious. You know, I feel, I feel hope. I feel very hopeful about the relationship. I believe that if they go through the therapy that is needed, that God is going to do a new thing in the relationship, and it's going to be absolutely amazing. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, our first encounter with the reflection of our older identities is our father for males and our mother for females. If that relationship is toxic, it can often impact how one sees themselves. While you have breath in your body, and if you still have the privilege to communicate with your mom, heal that relationship. Mother's Day will be brighter. Thanksgiving will be more thankful. And Christmas will be merrier. This is the moments we can never get back. Let's build legacy. Healthy legacy. Right now. Before our eyes lock, we will become change agents for our families. Let the healing begin. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.